load. Um, and my friend Trog would compare me. He would always compare me to Jerry Jeff Walker, which I didn't know. I was I had just moved from Oregon, so I didn't know what it meant to be a Jerry Jeff Walker <laughs> type. And um, but I listened to his music, and he he was singing about bouncing around, catching a ride, crashing on someone's floor, uh, being fucked up. And I was about 19, and I was living that life, which wasn't a lot of people weren't doing that. The Grateful Dead fans still were doing it a little, you know. <laughs> But I remember he was always singing about being free and all that, being free and traveling and traveling. So finally we went to uh, see him and I got obsessed. I got obsessed, I saw him at Green Hall and immediately got obsessed with his lifestyle and, his, and just everything about him. I, I could talk about him for the rest. I could tell you his life story way better than he could. Way better. Than it's fascinating. The fucking guy is not, his name's not Jerry Jeff Walker. And I'm not saying that to bust him. I'm saying that to say the guy's a goddamn genius who invented himself out of whole cloth. He scared me, man. And he's the hitchhiking, he makes, he makes, oh, he travels better than he, I mean, and he's one of the best singer songwriters ever, but that man can get around. Ramblin' Jack Elliott, too. It's a, it's a fucking, it's a skill, and they can do it. And uh, anyway, I got obsessed with him, got all of his records. When I got his records, I learned about this place, Lukenbach. And, and when I learned about Lukenbach, I found out he'd recorded there, but it was a bar you could play. And so then I thought, well, I want to I don't know, I thought I could play there because some other kids that were playing around San Marcos were playing Lukenbach on Saturdays. And so I sent a tape to them to see if I could play there. And they didn't call me for a long time. And uh, then about a few months later, Trog, I was living with this guy, Trog, and who's rest his soul. I think maybe one of, one of his kids is here. But, uh, he and I were, were watching TV. I, he was letting me stay on his couch. And uh, we were watching TV and the phone rings and um, it was the lady from Lukenbach. Somebody had canceled and they wanted to know if I could cover for the opener. And I was so thrilled. And I remember the Hil there was the Hilton Brothers and Trog and a couple other kids. And we all jumped in this car and we started to try to find Lukenbach. And they were all Texans and all of them said they knew how to find it. And I, it was funny, we didn't realize till we got here that this is as far as we got. There's a long way left from San Marcos to go from here. I didn't know that till now. I've been back here in, in all those years. We really did, we, it's a true story that we didn't know. We were already by this time lost, which is funny to me. We pulled in here to ask which way we were supposed to go. And that Marge, who they still have pictures of, uh, she, I remember I went in and she said, she didn't say fuck Lukenbach, but she said, why go there? Why don't you stay here? And I thought it made sense. So uh, my friends agreed too. We were young enough to just go fuck it, you know? And so we came in this bar that this part wasn't open yet. It was just that other part over there. And um, we came in and we got drinks and the, there was, it was more like this afternoon or yesterday afternoon. There's like 15 people in here. And I joked there was only like 11 teeth among the 15. <laughs> there was probably a few more than that, I bet. <laughs> and it was for me, for being from Oregon, it was very Texas and very scary-ish, but not totally scary. You just didn't want to say the wrong thing. And then I remember that, I re I'll never forget there was a magician in there that first night. And supposedly this place is haunted. So, yeah. and I found that out that night. And we, we had a really good time. And by the end, we had told the, the regulars, there was only about 14 other people what, that, we, that I was supposed to have played Lukenbach. And uh, they were like, well, get your guitar. So I got my guitar and I sang my songs. And then, she didn't make me pay when we left, or my friends. And to me, that was the beginning of a gig. I was yeah. like, I sang, we drank, I'm a working musician now. <laughs> 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 And I really, um, I really would start to go down there. And every time I did go there, she would turn that jukebox off and she would let me drink for free. And she was very sweet to me. I only went there when a handful, maybe a dozen, maybe more uh, times. Uh, and she just always was nice to me and um, kind of made me 
feel not like I was the best singer in the world, but like that that didn't make a fuck. It just didn't make a fuck. Do you like to sing? That's all that makes a fuck. Um, that uh, it's its own reward. And uh, I was really hungry for that theory at the time. And then I, I remember uh, Paige, uh, this girl I lived with in San Marcos, uh, broke up with me. Her life was starting to get realistic and all that. Like uh, <laughs> college was almost over, you know. But I was, I didn't do nothing but sing and bang around, you know. And so uh, I decided I was going to go to Memphis because I knew a guy that knew a guy that, I don't even remember why I went to Memphis, but uh, I went there and I immediately fell in with some girls on the campus of um, Rhodes College. And I, um, and I was, I, I started, I talked these girls into letting me crash there for a while. There was three of them and I would stay on their floor. And when they went to class, I made up this. So this would have been 90. And when they came back from class that night, I sang this for them. I didn't have the story or nothing yet. And I didn't know that it was Alice's restaurant yet. <laughs> Isn't that funny though? I was like 20, you know. I just couldn't hear it. You know what? That, that we made a record called Viva Satellite. When we were making it, I could not hear it sounding like Tom Petty. Now, fuck. But anyway, she said, the chorus of it, and this, this was to a degree, this was her, you know. She said, life too short to worry, oh, life too long to wait. I love everybody, life too long to hate. To meet a lot of men and haggle and finagle all the time. Trying to see if a nickel can be a big hit down. Well, I may want no surreal. I ain't got no time. Oh, Miss Virg attended bar at a shack out in the hills. It never paid her much money, boy, but it always paid for the bill. She must have been 80 years old. Her heart was warm and her beer was cold. She gave away more than she ever sold. And she'd be smiling all the time. I used to sing off in the corner of the place. It's like every Friday night. There'd be a loud crowd of cowboys. There'd be bikers and barroom fights. They would be drinking beer. They would be carrying on. Not a one of them would listen to one of my songs. But old Miss Virgin, she'd be singing along. She said she knew them all by heart. And then one night after closing up, she poured me a beer. She said, come over here and sit down, you little shit. I got something that you need to hear. She said, I bet you need to get through. Everybody gonna try to make trouble wrong you. I tell you right now, though, if you think what you do, never gonna get you down. Singing, you know, said, I'm too short to worry. I've been a long way. But too short and I love everybody. I'm too long. Check out this. Look out. Oh. Thank you so much. Charlie Sex has been trying to get me to show that to him for years. I ain't coming off of it. I'll tell you though, in a minute, I'll tell you about that. I haven't been back to the Devil's Backbone Tavern. It has been 32 years. I've been bumming around this country. I'll sing my songs for tips and beers, mostly beers. Now the night long when the drive is tough and the hotels are waiting to pay up. But I can't think what I'm doing now. But Lord, it never, ever get me down. I'm always singing, life's too short to worry. Life too long to wait. Too short not to love everybody. Life too long to hate. Part the reason why I put that in there, and this is true, there was, there really was this one guy that was scary and mean to me, 
and he really did only have a couple of teeth. <laughs> and he would uh, fuck with me, and I couldn't really play the guitar, but he would say, you suck at guitar. He didn't say a whole bunch of shit about Eddie Van Halen, really. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just mostly that I sucked at guitar. And as I was telling that story to those girls in that dorm, it occurred to me to go, And they laughed and they laughed. And I thought, shit, I'll do that at the show. Oh, I'd be short and well ready. Oh, I'd be long and wait. Too short and I'd be loving everybody. And I'd be long and wait. Wait, I gotta tell you one more thing. <laughs> on, the, on the first version of this song, I forget when it was, but the version with the story about Trog is on, on a live record. And when that record came out, I hadn't heard from Trog in like nine years. So in the liner notes of the record, I put right under the title of the song, Trog, where are you? With a question mark. And about five years went by with that record out. I found out later that his son heard it. But I didn't know that. I just knew that one year I came home from a tour and it was, they still had those phone machines. And on my phone machine, I had this message that just said, Hey, Tall, it's Tall. I'm right here, man. <laughs> and then he hung up. 